Uh, of the uh, Town of Dighton Planning Board meeting on uh, Wednesday, July 18th, 2018 at 6 p.m. A reminder, this is a public meeting being video and audio recorded for posterity, for cable broadcast and posterity. Please rise with the Pledge of Allegiance. Uh, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God. Indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you all. First item on the agenda is to discuss the Cedar State sidewalk changes. at 770 Broadway in Rainham. Uh, with me uh, this evening is Joe, uh, John Sajak, uh, representing uh, the G. Lopes Company and Corporation. I know... Well, the neighbors, I'll see. Thanks. And Joe, Joe Touch asked me to uh, express his uh, uh, regrets that he couldn't be here. A, a last minute family matter, matter came up. Uh, he had, had intended to have uh, wanted to be here at the meeting. So what we what we have here is based on some of the previous conversations, updated the sidewalk plan to show a five foot sidewalk as you can see coming around Billy's Lane on this side, and wrapping around Tommy's Tommy's way back out to Cedar Street, and also extending down to the cul-de-sac at Lot 10 at the entrance of the Wellington Estates subdivision. Uh, the proposed changes. Um, pretty much go in line with uh, the communication that was given to us um, from Heidi to the planning board, as well as some of the meetings that we've had here, uh, preparing a Cape Cod berm uh, with the sidewalk abutting the back of the Cape Cod berm, not having a grass strip, and this is what we've prepared uh, on this plan. So one of the the construction of the sidewalk would go in this the following manner. First, uh, the Cape Cod berm would be installed, then the sidewalk, then um, once all the lots are finished, then the top course of pavement would go down on top of the existing binder that is there. So what we're asking is that um, this type of um, <coughs> modification be approved not only on the Cedar Estates subdivision that you see here, but as well as the uh, Wellington Estates subdivision that is at the end of uh, this cul-de-sac on Tommy's Lane. Originally, we had some bike paths <coughs> and some other type of amenities, uh, but we were asked to remove the bike path, and I think we had the sidewalk on the other side of the, the roadway at one time. So we've moved it. Um, onto the, the inner side of the inner side of the circle, if you want to call it that way, and to give access out to Cedar Estates. And some of the reasoning um, that we're, we want to have this change is, as you know, um, when the Lopes Company took over this subdivision, Cedar Estates, the majority of the lots, I think, up, up to six were left to develop and the, the binder had been in for the majority of the time um, as people started to purchase homes and develop their lots and plant grass and bushes and whatnot. Um, so what this plan allows us to do is really to install the sidewalk for the public safety and to minimize the amount of alteration that would be onto the existing lots that are already occupied by people who have purchased homes in, this, in these subdivisions. Uh, did we ask you to remove the bike path? Um, I think I, I think maybe one of the, the meetings it was asked for us to remove the bike path. Yeah, I have a recollection of that. I don't need it. Okay. I did review the meeting uh, a couple days ago, and it was discussion of questioning why there was a bike path because it seemed to lead to nowhere. Oh. So that it was, was I think, right. It was something that you guys recommended. 
because you yeah. were trying to do that as opposed to a sidewalk. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the things that we were we didn't feel that it was a, it was a safety hazard. Okay. In that case. I, but I think the plan did have limited sidewalks and more bike paths. I think that's what that's it was. That's what it sounded. Right. But like you said, the, the bike paths to nowhere. Like if, if Cedar Street didn't have any sidewalks, you know, at some point in time, putting sidewalks to, no, to nowhere doesn't make sense either. However, you know, you can see that there are uh, families here in these subdivisions with children and times that we've been there doing engineering and surveying in meetings, we've seen the school buses and the kids. Uh, being picked up so they, they need a, a place to walk for public safety on these sidewalks is there a grass strip before the sidewalk no so doing? what we're proposing is eliminating that standard of the grass strip from the back of the curving to the to the first face of the sidewalk it's it's a maintenance issue um, and also if we put that grass strip in you know who is really going to maintain it is the town going to maintain it and Putting the sidewalk further into these people's lots will further alter their their lots they've been maintaining over the years um, as they yeah. purchased these lots a while ago. The only question I would have is when the mailboxes go in, we'll end up with uh, some of the road like the roads that we have in the city of Taunton that the telephone poles and the sidewalk and the, the, the mailboxes take up approximately 16 inches of the sidewalk. So from five feet, you get reduced down to three and a half feet or so. Uh, that's the only problem I have with that, that idea. That's why I like the two foot grass strip in between the road and the sidewalk. But that's my, my view. I have a, a big issue with uh, you know, with the, side, the mailboxes and telephone poles and all of that being part of the sidewalk. Yeah. So the, the homes are already there, yes. so the mailboxes are already in, what do you propose to do, work around them? Well, I, I think that in some cases you could actually, um, well, I, I don't know what type of a mail route this is. Is it, a, is it uh, the mailman or the mail person walking the they route drive. or they're driving? They drive. They're driving. So they need to have access to that mailbox. So. That means that the mailboxes would have to be relocated, if needed, to the front part of the sidewalk at the back of the berm, so they have the ability to be right next to them, uh, each mailbox as they drive by. I know my son is a, a mailman, and he has some routes in Somerset, in, in Fall River, in Rehoboth, and sometimes in Leanham that are walking routes, and some of them they have to get out of the truck and walk and then some of them are driving for all i know on billy's lane as you pull in all the mailboxes are on the east side of billy's lane so that wouldn't be an issue and it might continue all the way on the east side of tommy's way past the billy's way tommy's way intersection to the cul-de-sac so there we may only be talking I'm about right, a few right i know between i drove here, here because when i drove in to the, yesterday this gentleman here was coming out to his mailboxes and mailboxes on this side of the road. So I guess my point is, is that if I'm a mailman, and I'm not, but you drive in this way, you come in here, you go down here, you go back here. So the mailboxes are only, these may be on this side too. So there may be very little impact the mailboxes, but not having been there, I don't know if that's the case, but it makes sense. now. This isn't one of the subdivisions where the mailboxes are all out at the entrance, is it? No. Okay. They're all more association? No. Not on this one, the other one. They're, they're all single family homes. But on this extension of yes, the subdivision, that's... Although it hasn't been turned over to them yet because not all the lots are sold. Okay. So that's what we would like to propose and hopefully the planning board will... Oh, according to this GZA letter back in April, you were proposing a monolithic berm rather than a Cape Cod berm. A monolithic Cape Cod berm. Okay. So it'd be done, it, at that time we were saying, okay, put the final course of pavement down along with the berm at the same, at the same time. time. That's, yeah. that's the monolithic right. section we're talking about. However, construction-wise, 
in order for the sidewalks to go in in a timely fashion and then allow the remaining lots to be done uh, in the Wellington Estate subdivision. We need time to put the berm in, berm in, build the sidewalks, and then when the other lots are sold and constructed and no more construction equipment is going down and back and forth, right. then the contractor wants to pave both subdivisions at the same time, tying into the berms like we already have a berm in the Wellington Estates. So we'd right. have to place the berm on the binder, make it high enough so that when the top course goes in, it ties Still in. And then when the sidewalk goes in, it matches in to the top of the Cape Cod berm. Gotcha. So we've got a, a process in, in place to, to do that. Comments? Um, we wrote a letter, we met out in the field and uh, talked about some things. We wrote a letter, wrote a letter about a couple of you know, general concerns that we would have. Um, one is uh, elimination of the grass strip. Um, if you go that route, you also eliminate an area of snow storage. When they go to plow the streets, um, all the snow is just going to go up on the sidewalks. Um, so the, for maintaining the sidewalks, not only has to clear the snow off the sidewalk, but they've got to clear off all the plow the snow that gets accumulated up on onto the sidewalk. Um, the grass strip also provides a buffer between cars traveling down the roadway and pedestrians that are on, on the sidewalk. Um, it's two or three feet, but it's still a, a slight buffer that separates the two. Um, I've had some, this is just a comment, um, we've had some experience in the past with the, the Cape Cod berm going down. Um, sometimes it gets struck by either vehicles or plows, it gets dislodged. Um, it's hard to replace uh, in kind. Any repairs that are done to it, you know, it's obviously stand out a little bit more um, and you also have a little different difficult or different transition when you're going with that Cape Cod berm into the into the driveways um, as opposed to when you put the berm down with the finished course of payment um, it's easier to blend those those two together to get a better what we feel is we get a better product but uh, those are, I think those concerns are addressed in our letter Mr. Chairman and members of the board, the Cape Cod berm that we're talking about is more or less the same type of, of Cape Cod berm that you would see on Route 24 on the, the, the side of the travel lane in the gutter. So this isn't, a, this isn't a bituminous berm that's high and the plow can hit it. If a plow hits this, they're just scraping along the top of it and, and might make a mark into it. Eventually they break up, sir, into a bunch of little pieces because I've seen them all over the streets. Eventually they break down. When they're brand new, yeah. But after a few years, they break up and crumble, and it becomes a drainage issue also. I'm not a big fan of Cape Cod berms, but I mean, they are within our regulations, so. But I'm not a fan. <coughs> Barry, any comments, concerns? Because of the transition from hay to carrying and what I don't know what the original plan proposed, that's one concern of mine. Was the sidewalk on the, the west side of Tommy's originally? I don't know what the maybe Matt has the original, the original subdivision. Original My concern is this, people buying houses, assuming one thing and something else is going to happen without a public hearing. Okay, so, so it looks like it's on the opposite side of the road from where you're proposing. No. I can't even tell where the sidewalk is. Yeah, the the sidewalk. That's the sidewalk? Yeah. yeah. That hatch there? And then okay. this hatch here, yeah, on the west side. Alright, so we, you we were, were proposing it inside here this way, yeah. and it was approved on the outside. And then this side, this side here is, is, um, not on our plans, it's on this side here. So I, I do like what you're proposing tonight. That, that Thank way you, out. Tom. It's just that what happens if it just happened and, and people already bought houses? Well, I, I think we've already, we've also discussed um, uh, with Mr. Touch uh, notification to the, to the residents uh, when this is going to happen uh, 
so that they're aware of the sidewalks going in and where their properties are. Because if you think about it, we've, we've staked out most of right. the, uh, the monuments. We're in the process of putting them in, um, staked out most of the lots. So, so they would be fully aware of when the sidewalks would go in and know where the side, sidewalks would be going. And we've had some of that discussion uh, with some of the abutters as they've had questions when we were out there uh, doing work on some of the septic systems that we've done, the six lots, as well as some of the construction stakeout. So we've been trying to keep them uh, abreast of where things are going and how it's going to happen. I think we changed that to that particular uh, diagram due to uh, the resident's input. Right. If I remember correctly. I, I think you're correct. Yeah, you're right, Tom. And uh, where the proposed sidewalk is going, mm -hmm. have the owners of the houses planted within that area, like trees, for instance? Uh, this, this one did. Uh, this one, this yeah, one, I think they, right. they they got some arborvitaes, mm -hmm. but I think when they did that, my guys were out there, and because we were doing, well, no, we did these three lots. I'm pretty sure we staked this out for them to tell them where they needed to put them, because they were saying, oh, we're going to plant some bushes, what are you guys doing? And I, we said, we're doing the septic systems. So they say, well, we want to plant some bushes. So if the sidewalk's going to go over here, can you tell us where to put them? So I'm pretty sure that the guys told them where yeah, that line it, was. Yeah, they, they must have missed the mark. They haven't been close. And you think it's closer it, to it, the roadway over Yeah, there? with or without the grass strip. No well, matter where, the, where we go through the tank, they, they're too close. Yeah. Well, I mean, if, when we're talking about the, if the, the, the arborvitae is here, there's no sidewalk on this on right. the side, so that would be yeah. It should yeah. be much, but maybe the maybe in the it radius have to be might be close, right? But I think that you know they probably planted it there so that when people turn from Tommy's way onto Billy's Lane, the, the, the headlights yeah, at night are right. in the yeah. trees instead of the, the house. So I guess my question now is, if this were approved, would you be willing to work with the neighbors to transplant where necessary? I'm I'm sure that the the Lowe's company would work with the neighbors. Yes, sir. I, I'm sure we would. Because I mean, we got to move things. Yeah. You know. I mean, yeah. That, you guys got heavy equipment. They got spades and shovels, yeah. and they're not going to be happy having a I, plant. I don't think that that would be an issue, and I'm sure uh, we'll be on the phone <coughs> for us to touch this out uh, this evening, anyways, uh, or first thing in the morning to let him know the proceedings. But you know, the idea was to get the you know get the sidewalk approved. I know that uh, he and his company will work with the residents. I know you all, we already recommended and he agreed reaching out to them, maybe having a meeting with them to show them what's going on, take out the sidewalk before it happens so they're fully aware of what's going to happen. And also, and to remind them that where their lot ends and where the right of way is. Because sometimes there's this misunderstanding about residents that they think that they own to the edge of the pavement and they really don't. Mm -hmm. So we need to make sure that they understand what the right of way limits are and what their property limits are. And I'm sure that we can convey that uh, adequately to them. So with that just said, and this lot, obviously we got the boundaries are moved different than the rest of the development. Yep. Uh, I don't know if you look at this lot already, is there any for retaining wall? No, I haven't been out there recently. Hey, that's the one that has got a pretty high, you see the isoplasm there. Uh, yeah, because these lots here are kind of, I don't know, I don't know what happened. I don't know the history, but these ones here were approved first, and there was some funky changes to them in right. the form. Yeah, these. These, these were built to see the street, right? Mm -hmm. and right. Their boundary lines don't go. They don't go. Layout. Yeah, those aren't part of the subject. Right. Right. No, no. but this right of way is, and this right of way is. This resident here originally had, had well, they still do have some of their fence, but I thought that this isn't an updated survey. But when we asked, we told them. That their fence was into the street, I thought that they had moved it back. They were here, and we talked about that. And they said they would. Move yeah, they would. Them. They already moved their fence back. So they, they, they I think they get a uh, fairly good sized tree too. That, that's a minor thing. I know you guys be willing to work with them on that. But back to this property, I've dealt with her already. Okay. She, she can be pretty hot because uh, you guys trimmed the tree that was going out into the road. <laughs> And I got the front of it. Oh, you did? <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, thank you. 
You might have to send us the bill for that so, one, right? <laughs> All right, so what, if you need to put a wall she's, here she's or something, a, yeah, you might you might need it. Yeah. All right, so it'd be no, much. It'd be able to get back. Are, back um, before we do we before we do this, if the board is gonna willing willing to go along with the plan, we'll go out here and take a look at the grades again and see if we need to put some type of a wall at the, the back at the back of the sidewalk on the property line so that it will be retaining her earth on her lot. That that particular one. If if we if they wanted to go with a grass strip, I don't think get in there with that boundary line either. We don't on that one. Not on either side. What's the other issue about the grass strip that we didn't discuss? Joe? Which was what? About the email that we received back in October. Oh yeah, so we we oh no originally, and I think that uh, Mr. Pires uh, mentioned something about that. Um, there was some communication from Heidi to, yeah. to Mr. Touch. Just one of those things. Uh, this is the high, and I can forward this uh, to you as well. This is from Heidi. Hi, Joe. All is well here. Hope you're well with you. No grass strip. The highway department finds it is a nuisance. I have not received no plans for the new subdivision connecting with Council Oak. But that email says regarding Cedar Estates. Right. We're just also doing. doing so it is. It it's a responding to two things. <coughs> it's responding yeah. to two things. Right. Right. It's. It, it can be a nuisance. Um, they also important for the grass storage, but it, it, what it comes down to, it's more important what type of berm you're using for the pedestrian safety. Um, uses like with the monolithic, you allow the grass strip so there's a little bit of a buffer before the vehicle can reach the pedestrians. Or if you have a, a blunt or curbing or granite or the blunt curbing, and then the asphalt can come to it. But the blunt ones, those are one, those are the ones that chip away really easily with the snowplow. Those ones mm -hmm. that can be really messy. The monolithic, the plow is a little bit more forgiving. So, so I will say but, that when, and I'm sorry. Uh, how do you feel about the grass strip in a case like this and this in this particular thing here? What's your opinion of it? Considering public safety also. And the snow. Well, we're not pushing the snow on the sidewalks at this time, <laughs> so it's all their problem. Um, the speed that should be on average roads, I, th I think we can consider, we possibly can consider reducing that grass strip, but I'm the only one person. Uh, it's on the inside here, so you know, you get this in triple force of vehicle. We're <coughs> talking, should be 25, 30 miles an hour in there. And I, and I, actually, I, I don't like, I, like Mr. Figueredo pointed out, I don't like obstructions in a sidewalk. If you're going to put in the sidewalk, it's got to be clear. So if there's nowhere else to put mailboxes and sign poles, then you've got to have a grass strip. We haven't got two trees yet either. Because <laughs> the plan calls for trees both sides. And what happens to the trees? I think the trees should be placed in the property, not on the sidewalk or on a grass strip by, you know, by all means, because give it three, four years, the roots will take over the road and everything else. Right, yeah, two foot, two foot grass strip ain't gonna do it. No, it's right. not, no. Even a five foot, we're talking but about. A health, but a healthy tree, though, you taking everything in consideration, bringing the sidewalk in gives you more room, and some of these have septics in the front, too, so pushing the tree too far in is not gonna be conducive to a septic. There are quite a few here. Lot 10 is in the front, right here. This is in the front. That, yeah. I know 16 is in the front. Most of them are in the front. Because we try to do that to allow the residents to have pools or right. whatever they want in the backyard. Mm -hmm. what, what I was going to say, also based on the communications that we received, thinking there was going to be no grass strip, any of the lots that still needed grading, um, after receiving that communication, we graded based on that anticipation. So uh, that we weren't going to be adding the sidewalk plus the grass strip. So, 
So would anyone like to make a motion? I think we need two motions to decide whether this is a minor modification or a major. So the first motion would be a motion to, to make this a minor modification. The second motion, assuming that the first motion was agreed to, second motion would be to accept this and I would have a condition that, that the uh, contractors, developers work with the neighbors to uh, minimize the the destruction, destruction easy for me to say, and as well as move trees and fences and things for yeah, them rather than them. So those are the two motions that we, I believe, should entertain. Well, I'm going to make the first motion about a minor, but I'd like some more discussion on the acceptance of this. Okay. So I'll make the motion to consider this a minor change. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 So what more should we discuss? <coughs> well, on the corner of Billy's Lane and, and Tommy's Way, is that a three-way stop? Where, where are we here? Yeah. No. Uh, it's only a stop here. This is through way here. I have a problem with this being so close to over here. Somebody's going to take a ride on Tommy's Way. I don't know where those... Arborvitaes are that, that we were just the talking about. We're talking about. So if right somebody here. wants to take a left on Billy's Lane, or somebody's in there, um, I see that as a potential problem. Without it being a three-way stop, could we make that a one-way street? One on Billy's Lane. Yep. I think we talked about that. Yeah, yeah we, we did. did. Yeah, we did. Yeah, we did. Okay. Three-way stops interesting because local control can get that the signs in. The speed signs, no. Stop signs. Stop can. signs, yeah. That would slow traffic right well, now. You can't, no, you can't use it for speed. Control. <laughs> but it was interesting <clears throat> the way he presented it, though. It's more for the safety, safety of the pedestrians at that intersection. Yeah. Yeah. When they when people put our bodies and block the visibility, then uh, that's not. I don't want to be in that in a wheelchair in that walk. You know, it's not a bad idea. So I would, if you want to leave it there, I would. I would like to see a three-way stop, or a one-way, because we did talk about a one-way. A one-way with, with the circulation control. One way. This oh, that's way. what we discussed. Yeah. Yeah. What do you think about a one-way there? One way is going to be tough for the to be police to get enough stupid human stuff happening there already. <laughs> um, the three-way stop is probably the way to go. Yeah, it's only a sign. Yeah. And it may slow people down. Um, and then with that, then. How, how strong is it? If you have that intersection, it, it, it brings in the safety concerns with why the grass strip is there. Right. How strong do you feel about a grass strip? Because I'm leaning towards putting a grass strip there. Well, when we sweep them, it's easy without it. It's right under the road. Um, I, I'm strong about not having instructions in a sidewalk, though. Right. Mailboxes, light yeah, poles, and, and, and obviously snow. When they plow the roads, the snow is going to go on the sidewalk. What, what is the uh, minimum width for ADA compliant sidewalk? I think it's actually four feet with a five foot turnaround. Right. These the, are not ADA compliant by any means, right? The only the only the crossings are in the in the wheelchair ramps. You cannot force really subdivisions to have ADA compliant oh, sidewalks yeah, yeah. Okay. because of the slope because you have the maximum oh, slope yeah. right. requirement. So and the, that ADA law was really meant for commercial and um, office building and you know public use uh, type of things, not really applicable to a residential uh, uh, setting. However, the construction, the striping, the size conforms to uh, what a typical uh, ADA crosswalk and handicap accessible ramp would be. Okay. So, so these would be bituminous sidewalks, but these would be concrete. 
the ramps themselves are concrete. Right. So <clears throat> I know we didn't talk about this, but it has come up in discussion. Um, this cul-de-sac here mm -hmm. has Jersey barriers around it now to slow the people down. I saw that yesterday, yes. <clears throat> and um, I don't know who asked, but somebody asked about a solution to that particular area. And after speaking in the boards here, we can discuss it. Uh, with the building commission, I, I suggested a, a grass, grass circle that would keep the traffic to one side. You don't want to leave Jersey barriers and everything there, right? How do you feel about a grass That's a circle? Serious, serious problem. Oh, exactly, exactly. <laughs> that, I mean, anybody that's been behind the plow will know exactly what that takes. Right. Uh, so, is it, are the Jersey barriers like a, just a square of them? No, no they're, they're, they're kind they're of they're in a circle. They're, they're just plastic ones oh, okay. that are filled with sand uh, that um, are in a circle, in a circle. formation. I drove around them when I went down to Wellington. Okay, so and I, I see it as a traffic calming yeah, measure, yeah. Uh, but a, a, a grass island, you know, people will drive over those too, unless you have trees in them and things like or that. Unless you put a, a, a berm around it. Yeah, this, this is not the one of the best uh, designs that I have seen uh, here, as far as the traffic. I was there the other day, and I, I wasn't impressed at all. On well, don't, don't forget, these guys inherited a, a bankrupt project. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think we're fortunate enough they're willing to take it on. They're not making nothing on the front piece. Um, so the cul-de-sac was there before them. They just added that new road for the Wellington Acres. Um, was there an island, uh, Tom, in the original design? No, I don't think so. I don't, so. Think so. I don't remember so. seeing something like that. If we approve the sidewalk, the next developer's going to want to do the same thing. And then the next developer is going to want to do the same thing so everybody can have a bigger front yard. But in this case, the yards are already there and we're, we're trying to decide if a two-foot strip is going to create a whole lot more safety as opposed to the two-foot strip making a lot of people upset about losing their front yard. So the, but this is existing. This is not proposed. If it were proposed, we could just easily say no, but it's existing. The people that are living in those houses are not going to be happy when we when they we tell them that they're going to lose how many feet? Two more feet? They're not going to be happy shoveling snow off the sidewalk that the plow puts on there every time it goes by either. However, plus, we, plus do, we do have the other side of the road that the blade could be pushed in that angle to push the snow down on this side and then vice versa on the other. So you're not pushing it on the sidewalk. He's the pusher. Right. So here, so <laughs> always in one. <laughs> we already get all the houses to party in. Right. We add the grass strip and the sidewalk, and then we'd like to see the trees that were proposed. Now you're really intruding on people that just moved in. Right. And, and you said probably some of them. And some something. are going to say they didn't know anything about sidewalk. Right. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. They were, you know, get the nobody calls. likes <laughs> changes. Nobody likes changes. But no. once the changes are done. They go, you know what, it doesn't look bad at all, you know, but it's it's that initial thing that makes people upset, but then afterwards they get over it. The trees, know, though, will probably be 15, 20 feet off the road. That's correct, and uh, I, I think that's the way to go, and it looks nice. Once they're established... Right, when they're uniform. Yeah. That's correct, yes. yes. Just so I'm clear on... We, in the, we started discussion, we talked about the one sidewalk going into Wellington Estates. So you want to continue, are you asking us to continue? We want to do the same the thing. The one in, sidewalk yes, sir. going into? Wellington Estates, the same type of construction. Now, is that built out? That wasn't even started yet, right? The curbing is in. <clears throat> the curbing is in the Cape Cod Burby? Yes, it's. It went it's down a, with the binder. It's a, they had, oh, they did they it with the binder. They had that lift up when it went through. Yes, but nothing for the sidewalks are in right now. No, but the the current none the, of the three streets have sidewalks yet for preparation. Uh, the front piece definitely. The front piece definitely have stakes out that should clearly see where it's going. <coughs> 
you know, the one sidewalk in this is a different story because a lot of those were existing. This wasn't existing yet. That's a whole other discussion, I think, we need to have. That's my opinion. Besides that, you don't have the plans for it. I don't have the plans. But the, the idea is, is to, if the sidewalks were proposed on both sides, on Wellington Estates. Do you know if that's the case? I don't yeah. believe so, but I, I will well, check out the plan. Right. I can't be so the idea was to match if we're going to have no grass strip here, we'd like to have no grass strip there. Because now we're we're getting into that the lots of being sold too again. So it was the thought that if we're connecting this sidewalk here to the Wellington <coughs> Estates from Cedar Estates, that the same type of construction with no grass strip would be applicable personally I, I will be the first one to speak I would like to see the grass strip that's my vote Easy. yeah I'm gonna have to agree with Joe I know where Mr. Woods are <laughs> when the grass, you did it yeah. I like sidewalks. You do. Yeah. So we're <laughs> all right. So we're clear. No grass strip here and grass strip here, or grass strip here and grass strip here. We haven't made a motion, so okay, we're not no. clear. <laughs> Until someone makes a motion, I'll make a motion to uh, require grass a lot of strips throughout. Throughout. I'll second okay. the motion. All in favor? Aye. 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 No. Did we approve this with one sidewalk? I wasn't the engineer of record on this one, so I, I don't know. Thank you. I'm trying to bring it up. I don't have it yet. That's my best recollection. It was a conservation side, I believe. Oh, our Wellington states. Carrie, you don't have the plan. Is that Wellington? Carrie, do you have the plan? Is that Wellington? Yeah. Yeah. Oops. Okay. I'm still I learning. feel bad for us. You're doing I'm a great learning, job. I'm learning. Wow. Oh, oh don't, 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 don't praise yet. Don't praise yet. It's not like a full form. I thought this was going to be quick. I just don't want to order greater one. 
Well, sidewalk if we've mm -hmm. not done anything before, you know. All right, well. Maybe the sidewalk will be better. It's one of these piles? In one of the, nope, that's all solar. Okay. <laughs> so, ladies, you'll have to excuse me for one minute oh, so I can get behind <clears throat> those drawers. And I know it's not on the That's just a cedar state's yeah. Well, this was only within a couple of years, so <laughs> maybe they filed correctly. I thought they brought it up. I did a subdivision in that bar that I actually went back to the plenty before to bring up the with a grass strip in. Oh, yeah. They didn't want originally, they didn't want no, to. No I went back to them, and now they're making everybody do it. Because they saw what I did. I think it kind of makes sense. Uh, and then what I did, the trees, they called for the trees but just on the inside of the sidewalk. I put the trees in. Two what, feet, 15 feet off of the edge of the, the curvy. But I put them all in line, and then it looks like I'm going to build new ones. <laughs> that long, huh? <laughs> Perhaps we should table it until we have a better understanding of it, of the full picture. Because it gives a lot of hours. I can get the. We have it planned. It's just that the signs from filed from SciTech. Yep. And so we know exactly what was approved, yep. and we know what exactly was originally approved for this subdivision and any modifications. Right. When I saw that island there, that was the first time I ever saw that. Yeah, it was that. funny you saw that because as soon as I saw it, I said, we approved an island for that. We did. Yeah, we did. But again, so that we're not... Just I mean, for the traffic purposes. Unless Carrie can come up with it in the next couple minutes, I propose that uh, we table this until... Right now we have two no votes on the, on the sidewalk strip. Uh, one more vote and it's dead. Yeah, or three, we, three no votes. We had three? Yeah. I only heard two. For myself. You, you were third? Third. Third. So. And it's carried. For that one, but nothing for the uh, Well, the, the other one is, is not before us right now. So we really don't have to find it right now. Everybody else is new. All the friends and doesn't show up. Make them the gym. Be the Just make them the shit when, when they don't show up. The yeah. <laughs> yeah. We can prize for We can do this one. When they come back, we've <laughs> already denied it. Well, no, we can I'm, make a motion with those conditions, right? Well, I'm told that if I only heard two people vote to deny the grass strip, but I'm told that what he said. Well, we can have another vote yes. just to be sure. 
Yeah. Do that. Okay, let's do it again. Okay. I'll make a motion to do a grass strip. Oh, I second it. That's correct. And okay, you seconded it, but I didn't hear you say oh. say aye. Okay, you'll hear me this time. Okay. okay. Did you second it this time? Yes, second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? No. Okay, so it's you have to put in a grass strip. And as far as the the other part. Well, we'll have Carrie look into it, and then we'll have a more informed decision. But my expectation is that you're going to have to put in a grass strip based on this conversation. Okay, okay. so grass right. strip, three-way stop, and then the street trees go on the lots. That's what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we're clear to miss the touch. Do we need a motion for that three-way stop? In this is probably should, huh? Probably should. Yeah. Yeah, we should. I'll make the motion for a three-way stop at the intersection of uh, Billy's Way and Tommy's Way. 15, 16. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Clear. Aye. Yeah. After the sidewalk? Okay. Yeah. So we got edge of pavement. It's very narrow right here. Uh, yeah, that's what I noticed. 11 or 12 feet on each side. 11 or 12. And then a 15-foot island right there. For that modification that is. We need to verify if that was really approved and recorded, that modification okay. with the island. I was just, like I said, I, I, I drove in here and I found this to be very, very, very narrow. narrow. Yes. And I, that kind of bothers me, but I'm, I guess that... Right. I think the narrowness was for the traffic camping also. Yeah. But what was supposed to happen in the cul-de-sac would be found. It'd be nice if it was eliminated and it looked like a one road going in. You mean eliminate the, the cul-de-sac yeah, thing in, not altogether? Yeah, it's, it, the purpose was to turn around. That was before the road was continuing. Right. Although the cul-de-sac's already there, so is this a th this lot might not have the required frontage if that were to be straight. This lot here, yeah. it's coming all the way over to here. So. Yeah. Oh, right, you're right. It's got plenty okay, of so yeah, it's got plenty of front. Never mind, I forgot about the other part of the road. Ideally, when you abandon these things, this this really gets abandoned and the right of way goes straight, and then this becomes this person's lot. That's usually how you do it, but the funky angle of this thing. This is already sold here. All of these. One. Yep. So that, this was the yeah, last. Right. I, But the electric transformer, all that stuff is our. Oh, it's already in there. So, from a planning perspective, it normally should go straight. Like this would be, this part here would go back, and this would here go here, and then the subdivision would go. Yeah, we apologize, but we didn't know you were going to be looking to do the same thing over here that, you know, we weren't anticipating that, otherwise, we'd probably have stuff ready yeah. to make a decision. But. Okay. So we know what we're doing here. So put us on the agenda for Wellington. Okay. On for, the next. Next, for the next. Uh, for your next. You know, I must have requested some waivers on that. Unless they did, I don't. I, yeah, I don't, don't know because I didn't do that subdivision. So I got to talk to Jeff over at Site Tech. Maybe she can find them. Terry can find them also. To make so. sure, because even that island that that uh, a modification was Cape Cod Burned Island. Tommy, does that jog your memory at all? When this was modified, that that island was supposed to be there. The only thing that jogged my memory is um, I was here for that meeting too. They were talking about different ways for traffic dampening and whatnot. Uh, whether it's named or not, I don't. I, was, I apologize for that. Okay, no worries. Okay. Because There's after that. Way, way after way that, after like that. two years ago. Okay. 
we yeah, went, I remember we went from discussing 50, it. 54 lots to 28 lots. Okay. And there should be a full set of plans. And that's what we're talking Somewhere, about. Was yeah. Originally, yeah. That part but there. I think in the process of this, whatever being approved or changed or whatever, one of these lots was was sold. So therefore, their frontage went right. here. Yep. So you couldn't. That now that's what happened. Yep. This lot was sold. That's exactly what it was. Uh, so they had to change. Exactly they had to change it so they could keep this little triangle. Because mm -hmm. yep. probably somebody was being held hostage, right? Yeah, you're absolutely right. You know what? I'll I'll circle back with uh, SciTech and Jeff, Tom, and tomorrow, and find out what the real what approved the, subdivision was, was and whatever waivers were granted, and so on and so forth. He would have that information. Okay. Um, and in then the meantime, I'll look here, my piles of it, okay. and see what I can come up with. So we're looking for the Wellington Acres current plans, which was about, two, about 2016, 2015, 2016, somewhere in there. Yeah. And in particular, we're looking for the sidewalk information, correct? Yeah, there should be a whole set of design plans, like what Matt pulled out for Cedar Estates. Okay. Sidewalk, grading, drainage, lot layout. And you're details. looking to be put on the August 15th agenda. That's yeah. the next time we're meeting. Yes. Okay. Right. So we're digging more. Okay. So keep you busy till then, right? Yeah. You think so? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all. Okay, next item on the agenda is the proposed preliminary subdivision plan on Maynard Lane. Hi, Hello. Uh, introduce myself to Joe Ferreira, and I'm from Somerset, and I appreciate what you do only because I was uh, served a five-year sentence on the planning board in Somerset, mm -hmm. and uh, so um, I did come and say it was a preliminary subdivision, but I have no idea what I'm doing, um, so I just came for a conversation really. So I have some property on Maynard Lane. Um, and I spoke to a couple of people, and uh, the secretary was great when I came in to talk to her. And I just wanted to talk about maybe doing a conceptual, conventional layout as opposed to a uh, conservation layout. So I have plans of two separate things, uh, 12 lots doing a conventional subdivision uh, in a Butts uh, Rehoboth. So I know the person that owns the other side of the property that I bought in Rehoboth could do a conventional subdivision, or we could save land around it and do a conservation subdivision. Also, I've been uh, talking to some people who want to put solar there. So those are three different things. Uh, conventional subdivision, uh, conceptual plan for a conservation subdivision, and solar. So I just wanted to get the board's feedback on what you think might be uh, you know, possible for what, what we should do. How many lots on the conservation? Uh, there are 12 on each lot. Mr. Chairman, I should give it to you first. As a matter of courtesy. I'm not proud. Just kind of do it right, Mr. Chairman. You get it first. Okay. And the secretary is the most next important person. <laughs> I was superintendent. Oh, I'm sorry. I want to bring one for you, Joe Ferrer. Nice to meet you. Mm -hmm. um, so, so I um, can't follow it. I don't know where it is. It's my first. Yeah. Well, Maynard Lane. Um, so north of uh, Route 44 is a little cul-de-sac that it ends there. Um, if we did a subdivision there, conventional, I wouldn't be asking you to waive things that you haven't waived before. You have waived those as a board. Um, the extension of a uh, cul-de-sac. And uh, sidewalk waivers and other things that you've waived before for the subdivisions that I'm familiar with. Um, so How long is the proposed road on the conventional? Um, I think it's about um, seven or eight hundred feet uh, okay. on the conventional. Um, so the conventional goes right through to be over. Like I said, I'm. Um, is that Fairview familiar. Avenue there? Too? I'm sorry. Is that Fairview Avenue? Um, at the line. I think it is, but I'm not sure of the street. 
talked to his developer, you know, Rob Davis is his name. He's done a lot of work up here, actually. He was the uh, engineer when it was going to be subdivided um, many, many years ago. And someone went bankrupt. So this is a revived subdivision. Um, what are talking about? Just for the record, we have denied extensions, uh, dead end roads more than 600 feet. Right, you've also approved them, too. We've right? also approved them. Right. But most recently, we have denied them. Yeah. Just so that we're clear that it's no, we're not always the same board. So right. past boards have done things that this is a new board. I understand that. So, yeah. I'm still not clear where where's the road where's the road where's this come from? It's just it, it's out in space right now. I'm so right. The, the conventional subdivision? Either one. Both. There's no road. How do I get here? I have to fly in. Oh, I'm sorry. To this plan. I'm sorry. Yeah, 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 yeah. Didn't mean to do that. And I wish my engineer was available tonight, but he had he had another meeting. Um, so this is Montauk. Street in in, uh, in Dighton that comes through. Montauk? Yeah, North Street. Uh, I'm sorry, Maynard. Maynard Lane. Maynard Lane. North Street, Maynard Lane. Maynard Lane's Maynard. off of North Street. Okay. Maynard, yeah. And uh, so, the power lines directly across from the cul de sac would be the Rehoboth Nike site. Ah, uh, 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 yeah. Right there, yeah. going to the west of it. Yeah. A little bit towards that. Um, and it, is it Maynard Tristan? Lane a dead end? It's a cul-de-sac. It is a cul-de-sac. Yes. Yeah. So you're asking for a cul-de-sac off of a cul-de-sac. Well, it'd be an extension of the cul-de-sac. An yes. extension of the cul-de-sac. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, it's already a dead end. Right. And this and would be extending the dead end either straight through as a conventional, mm -hmm. or the um, conservation plan has it. So that extending the cul-de-sac. Whatever length of, uh, mm -hmm. of this road right now. If it's a thousand feet, you want to add eight hundred feet to that. I think it's, and don't quote me on this, but I think it's around six hundred and fifty, and we'd be adding, yeah, exactly, as opposed to having a, a thoroughfare, which I think we can do as a matter of right, um, going through the Hobbit, um, so that it doesn't end in a cul-de-sac. Where would this go if it were if it were ending in some other street? It would go, so that's the Hoboth line? Yeah, yeah. It would go to uh, the person that I'm talking to, owns property on the other side. Uh -huh. And I think it came out, come out on Fairview Ave in Rehoboth. Uh, in is that Hebert? I'm sorry? Is that Hebert? Um, so Rob, Rob Davis owned the property over here? Yeah. I'm not sure of the name. Uh, going towards Fairview would be Hebert's, and then the other way would be Peck Street. Yeah, I, I don't know. He said this is conceptual, just to get some ideas of what the board's feeling. So. Okay. My opinion is that a dead end street off of a dead end street is going way beyond what our subdivision bylaws allow. So a waiver would be a major waiver. It wouldn't just be. I've only been on the board for four years, so I can't say that there's never been a waiver for a, a cul-de-sac on a cul-de-sac, but I would not be in favor of it. Well, it would be an extension of the cul-de-sac. Well, so. whatever you call it, it's already a dead end, so now it's a deader end. You no, think people on that cul-de-sac would yeah, want yeah. more traffic down their street? I don't think they would. The people that are on the cul-de-sac? Yeah. Well, I guess they have, a, I guess they have um, you know, would, does anyone want more traffic by their street? No. I don't think so. No. Why would they? So would they want um, six more houses up the street or 12 more houses? Or would they want to have a thoroughfare that connects to another town that has a thoroughfare that has maybe 30 houses up the street that connects to another town? So that, that's a question. And probably they would want nothing. Well, they want Absolutely. Nothing. No, no one wants anything, right? Yeah, we all know that. They don't yeah, want yeah, anything. Want, yeah, yeah. But yeah. For Everyone the, wants but, a tent. But the reason for the limit of dead end streets is a public safety issue so we're making it a, a public safety issue more of an issue by extending a dead end by making it a thoroughfare where we're lessening the public safety issue we're, where we're it making goes. it more safe because a fire <laughs> engine can come in from either town you know where it so is. i know where it is yeah you know this is just conceptual and i'm i'm not this part right here i'm, I'm not uh, saying that yeah, a cul de sac on a cul de sac yeah, wouldn't be approved no, no, but this is north street from a public yeah, safety this is, this is perspective a thoroughfare would be better yeah, yeah, yeah. would no, it be better for the neighbors not, would if their child is in need of an ambulance somewhere here <laughs> would it be better in terms of peace and quiet probably 
typically not. So th that's just something that all has to be weighed. Be but really, before, well, he's before I one there, was even more opinionated road. than I am now, I'd want to see more detail. Like, like this, as I said, according to this plan, I'm helicoptering in, although I'm being yeah. silly. Yeah, no. My point is, is that yeah. I, I, I want more, more detail right. to be able to, to have a more informed say, opinion. This is his property right here. So how long did you say Maynard Lane was? It's a, it's a, it's I think a it's about 600 now. feet, but don't quote me on that. It's, it's around 600 feet. It's probably 600 because and that's our yeah. limit. Right. Yeah. Limit. I can see yeah. maybe. And you're right. adding, what'd you say, seven to 800? So we're having a, making a 1,400 foot. Right. Yeah, I'm the, the, I'm the senior member on this board. I can never, we've never extended a cul de sac to another cul de sac. Well, my engineer, years, my engineer gave me a plan that shows that you have. But I can I can bring those to you and show you. Maybe he's wrong. Maybe he's wrong. Yeah. Uh, but uh, not since 2001 or 2000. Yeah. So yeah. if you are telling me that you would prefer a conventional subdivision with a road right through, I'll go that way. Um, and the other uh, option I have is people ask me about a uh, solar solar project, which I guess there's no zoning, is what I understand in Dayton. Um, well, yeah, we, we, have, yeah. we have specific so I bylaws the, I talked to the building inspector, and he told me that there's no, like, zones for in solar. You can put it anywhere in Dutton, oh, oh, as long as they go okay. through. Okay. That's a that's that's criteria. It requires a special that, permit. Is that yeah. correct? Special yeah. permit. It's as is, that, of, is that from the planning board as well? Yeah. Yes. Okay. It's as of right. Anywhere in town, assu assuming you meet the certain dimensional requirements, All right. as well as our special permit requirements. It's a state regulation that... As a solar installation can go in any zoning. Okay. So if uh, if the Rehoboth gentleman wants to combine forces with you to make a bigger solar array, then you'd have two permitting processes, both the planning board in Dighton and whatever the yeah. rules are in Rehoboth. But, but if, if I just did it myself in Dighton, it, it's as of right either either town. Right. right. Yeah. As long as you meet the regulations, which. Uh, I, I think solar would be the, a good way to go on this one. You have to have a public hearing. How much land is this all together? Not about 17 acres. 17 acres? That includes uh, Eastman under the uh, National Grid Followings. So it's kind of a, like a buffer from when the cul-de-sac ends right now. There's a National Grid Eastman for 300 feet, and then it opens up to the property that I own. I mean, I own it all, but there's an easement there. So maybe uh, it would be a natural buffer zone the neighbors not not to see the solar i agree with that 100 yeah. percent. Mm -hmm. i love that idea yeah well. i believe that solar is the permitting process for solar is less onerous than a subdivision plan but it really would be up to you which process you wanted to go through um, okay. solar i don't know what the benefits are to you personally i know the benefits to the town are more substantial than a conventional or conservation subdivision because our school is the first thing at the seams as you probably heard. Oh yeah. I own some property in Dayton. I, I get it. <laughs> it's not, not as bad as Somerset, but yeah. Right. If you if you bring up more plans on extending main lane anyway through way or whatever what's going to happen with that cul-de-sac that would have to be addressed because the way the traffic flow is yeah, we continue through. So, so, so it would be a straight road. Right, but if, Dunham, someone, so if it. someone's heading back towards North Street Dunham, and someone just wants to use the cul-de-sac, who has it right away? Well, well I think the cul-de-sac, uh, yeah, I don't know if it would go away. Cul-de-sac would go away. Right, but we'll, yeah, but we'll it. take it and make it go away. <laughs> yeah, who's the owner of the cul-de-sac? Is, is it public road? Yeah, it's public yeah. yeah, road. Yeah. yeah, you come back with a plan on how to attack that. Yeah, I mean, it's not a main thoroughfare. It's not like, you know, you have a hundred cars a day going through there. It's yeah. going to be, whoever lives on Main on Lane and walk up the street. I just uh, have the same problem right now with that mm -hmm. development we were just talking about. Is that the same thing, though? Yes. Right? Similar. Similar, yeah. I, I think I have a much bigger problem. I agree with uh, mm -hmm. our chairman that mm -hmm. extending a cul-de-sac. Well, 1,400 feet total or more. Yeah. <clears throat> well, 
Okay. You know, and again, it was just conversation. I appreciate yeah. your time. Yep. We appreciate um, you coming in because you're much better off having this conversation now than after you've spent a lot of money on something that that uh, may or may not be doable. Mm. Yeah. No, I didn't. I didn't know uh, the board's feeling about having a conservation subdivision preserving land all around as opposed to a regular subdivision or the street going through. But if you're telling me that it's, um, I'm getting the feeling, the sense that it's, we'll either have a street going through or solar is what you prefer, that you're not in favor of a conservation subdivision extending extending the uh, cul-de-sac, is, is, that, is that correct? We are not in favor or out of favor of a conservation subdivision. We are not in favor of an extended dead end. So if you could, if you could come up with a conservation subdivision that did not have a dead end, then we have a different opinion, or at least I'd have a different opinion. So, mm -hmm. but I, I'll talk to my engineer about that. I don't know. I don't know how yeah. you do it. Yeah. I mean, the uh, the concept that you have isn't bad. It's just that again, the, the I don't know if, if there's a. a if there are many extensions, I know in other towns I've been on cul-de-sacs that all of a sudden are more cul-de-sacs and extended cul-de-sacs, and I don't know how, I've never seen one in this town, but I've not to say that they haven't been approved, but I would not to, not want to approve something that would be some basis for someone else wanting to do it again. Well, actually, and again, the, one, the again. one we just looked at was a road off the cul-de-sac. Well, yes, but it was a throughway. And there's a loop. It was a throughway. Oh, yeah, there's a, a way around. It was a throughway all the way up to Old Dead Wellington, and it was 54 so lots. And when they went from 54 to 24, then there was a, it was in the planning That's board's opinion that it was in the public interest to allow it. Absolutely. But this is a different situation. It's, it, it's, we're not going from 54. Four to twenty-seven. We're going from twelve to twelve. So my friend over here is asking me, uh, "Have you?" And I know you have approved um, subdivisions that do have an extension of the cul-de-sacs. I have that on record. Um, but my other question: Have you approved teardrops so you drive around the subdivision and come back out through the subdivision? Uh, is that what you're about? Yeah, you know, That's if you put a road in and then you take the road and circle a road around. I did it on Pine Street. Pines. We went up so many feet and then we tear dropped it around and looped it. That, that makes more sense. That yeah, sounds reasonable. Yeah, Pines is a 40B. That's, that's a totally yeah. different entity. But I just said the concept's the same. Just ask if you yeah. tear drop the road. Right. Because now you only go in 600 feet and you have in and out on both ends on the far end. But the difference is the ZBA approved that. I know. You don't have to go through planning. It was, I know. It was I a waiver. I know. Whereas planning, we have our regulations and we can waive whatever we, we feel is right. fit. But it has to be in the public interest. For instance, right. we did waive, we did allow a cul-de-sac off of a cul-de-sac, but originally it was a throughway with 54 lots, and it became 27 lots. And the the agreement was that 27 lots with a cul-de-sac off a cul-de-sac was in the town's interest rather than having 54 lots, we had 27 lots. And, and instead of having, it was a conservation subdivision, instead of having 23 acres of conservation land. We ended up with 50 some odd acres. So there was a there was a major trade-off in allowing what you are describing as something we've done before. So in this case, I don't see a trade-off. It's 12 lots, 12 lots. If you said I can do a conventional subdivision with 32 lots, but I'd rather do a conservation subdivision with 12 lots. Well, now we're talking about something. Well, in, in the uh, proposal I gave you, actually, we'd be preserving a lot of land around it. Right. I don't know how many acres. Uh, uh, 5.7. Yeah, so you'd be saving five acres of greenery. So um, more like six and a quarter acres. Yeah, as and opposed you to. still have a bunch more houses in. But again. No, it'd be, it'd be 12 or 12. I get 12 that part. But there'd be six acres of greenery surrounding it. Right. That was the concept. Right, and, and we're back to the public safety issue of. I don't understand that, to be honest with you. I was a cop for 30 years. I don't understand. Um, whether you go on a road for 600 feet or a road for 1,000 feet, you're going to get to the house, you're going to turn around, and you're going to go out the other way. I don't, uh, I don't, I don't know what you mean. Maybe you, I, I'm not sure. I assume. I want to address your concern, right. and I'm just not sure what you mean by yeah. that. Well, 
my belief is that most towns have a 600 foot limit to, a, to a cul de sacs, and that's pretty standard for that reason, for safety issues. I, I may be wrong, but go to any, many towns in the state of Massachusetts allow a single egress subdivision to be limited to 600 feet. Now, I'm guessing that the fire chief could answer it better than I can. Well, to answer your other question, would a teardrop <clears throat> work if we can work it into the amount of land that's here? It's not a dead end street. Well, uh, again, now we have to we have to define our terms. A dead end street is technically it's a single egress subdivision. If it's a teardrop with a single egress, it's still a 600 foot limit. Whether it's now, some developers have made that 600 foot a boulevard that's actually two roads. Is that correct? I don't know if it's in this town, but well, that exception would be the first one example you used is Sunny's Way. That that's that is a teardrop. It's a teardrop. Yeah. yeah, but they have the, the boulevard entrance, so it's technically two means of egress. So again, you know, I, I, I may be incorrect about the public safety issue, but that's what uh, I believe is why the single egress subdivisions in most towns are limited to around 600 feet. And it may not be for police, it may be for fire, I, I don't know, but I believe it's public safety. No, and I, I want to address your concerns, that's why I asked. Yeah, I understand. Like, what your concern is so we can address it and yep. try to appease the board, um, you know, to make it suitable for, for everyone. Mm -hmm. um, but if you tell me how or why or what your concern is, maybe I can talk to the engineer and maybe work around Basically, it. the length of the road, dead end road. Period. I know we've approved some, well, the, let's put it this way, the planning board has approved some in the past. They have. But the board Absolutely. is currently constituted. As a <coughs> Within the last few years, they have. But I want to make it, you know, so that everyone's happy here. At least the majority of the boys happy, I guess. Oh, so I get approval. Oh, I, <laughs> I don't want to count. But uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. In my opinion, the <laughs> the town's best interest would be a solar solar system. Oh. But oh, you, so have to, you have well, to, you have look to at just, those options you have first. To work, work the numbers and figure out what works for yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. And then. Uh, all right. So, should we explore the teardrop? You can, but... Uh, hmm. How many houses on Maynard's Way? Who cares about What's the frontage to one? Six or eight? It's mm. probably, if it's 600 feet. Yeah, six or eight, yeah. Probably Plus maybe two at the cool side, maybe eight, right? Seven. Eight yeah. homes. My guess is about eight, my guess. Um, I'm sure they're very happy. I'm sure they are. <laughs> Just like every other person that lives on the street with no further subdivision. Like the first guy that lived in Dighton or the first guy that lived in Somerset. Yeah. yeah. No one wants further subdivision. I get it. <laughs> yeah, Been there, done that. The Indians were happy with us. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No one wants anything else down the road. I wonder how retreat lots would uh, work off of the cul de sac. Yeah, how many acres you got there? About 17. 17. You get two retreat lots. You get two out. retreat lots. Oh, yeah, we got that. I bought them. I bought them from, uh, I bought these lots from uh, Mechanics Bank. Well, one from Mechanics Bank and I bought one from someone who sold. So they had two eight acre um, lots. I bought those two lots. Yeah. I wanted some of Retreat lots are nice. <laughs> 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 Thanks, Bob. <laughs> yeah, that is. So, uh, anybody have back? any suggestions? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Without killing them with a U-shaped road going in and out of there. Well, 
you know, would we have to have a public hearing with the loan manager? Well, if this, if they submitted a preliminary subdivision plan, we would go through the typical application process and the abutters would be alerted and the abutters to the abutters or all the people in Maynard Way would find out about it and they'd come and, and, and comment. That's how it typically works. Much but, better how far it is out to Fairview Avenue. Okay. We'll do that. Yeah. It's not do, you, do you know this person here? Oh, yeah, so yeah, the guy that owns the property on the other side is Rob Davis. He's an engineer, he's a civil engineer. He's my engineer. He owns, he owns the property on the other side. We can do a subdivision straight through. Got that, you know, he owns all that property. Um, so well, we're talking about- That's a thought about, too. That's a thought to do a conventional subdivision. I, you know, I think that's a, I think it's a given. I think it's a matter of right. Um, I get yes. that. So we're coming to you saying, okay, if we don't do that as a matter of right, um, are you willing to work with us and do something else? And if not, maybe that's what we do at the end of the day. We come in, we have a conventional subdivision, we extend it straight through, we empty out into Rehoboth, we have 12 lots, it's done. Um, the, the alternative is to have a smaller subdivision, the conservation, where we save six acres around us and uh, have a turnaround. But if the people on Maynard Lane and the board chooses, um, if we can't go solar, then we'll put a conventional subdivision there. Those are the choices. I'm just coming in to explore. And, you know, it's better for me, maybe, if we have the conventional. I don't know. Maybe it's better for the town if we have the conservation. Maybe it's better for all of us if we go solar. But those are the three things that I'm trying to figure out. Is there enough room between here and here to have two roads in? That's, I don't know. That's a good the, question. I mean, yeah. That make you happy, like you well, know. The reason, I, happy, the reason I ask is, so like a have, huge tear drop. <laughs> if, if you have two, again, I don't know That's where this road is. Though. Yeah. But if yeah. you have two yeah. roads in, yeah. Then you're 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 not a a dead end cul-de-sac, and you you perhaps can go either conventional or con conservation subdivision without having to make it a. Way. I, I Do you think that to changes to public safety? Yes, because you a fire engine can come in, and, and here's the reason for the public safety thing: if if a car's on fire at the entrance to the cul-de-sac, and the fire engines show up, and somebody needs an ambulance down the other end, they can't get through. That's what the two two streets are about. I mean, it sounds silly, but <coughs> I believe that's that's pretty accurate as to why. They are limited to 600 feet, and it may never happen in a lifetime. But it, but those are the those are the, that's the rationale behind having two access points, two entrances into a subdivision. If one of them is blocked off by Osama bin Laden, <laughs> then <laughs> well, one of his friends. <laughs> but Let's get Bob talking about politics. That's, <laughs> but but, but, but that, again, that's the rationale for the for the for the means of getting in and out the public safety issue and you're right uh, whether it's 600 feet or 6,000 feet of dead end one fire engine or two fire engines can get in there but it, if it's blocked they don't have any other way to get in there if you do as I described with this with a half circle and then a cul-de-sac off of that uh, I that might I don't know if you'll get more than 12 lots you might get 11 but it, it's something to explore. Okay. All right. No, I appreciate that. Yeah. Yeah. That's why I came here tonight. So we can think on the board is. Thank you. Now, one word of advice that you can take or leave. We had a, a last summer at this time, somebody came in with a similar plan. Six months passed, and they came in with a definitive plan. There was no preliminary subdivision. And as a result, it was a mess. So wh whatever way you go, please come in with a preliminary subdivision plan, not a final subdivision plan. Yeah. As you'll see in our bylaws, a preliminary subdivision plan gives us a lot of room to maneuver, whereas and, and at much lower cost to you. Yeah. Whereas if you come in with a definitive subdivision, if you bypass the preliminary, yeah. you're going to end up changing that definitive in a ways that will be more expensive. I appreciate that advice. Thank you. Well, just come in and talk to us. With yeah, yeah. anytime. Yeah. Yeah. Even a hand-drawn thing. You. But 
Yeah, it'd be nice if you showed where it comes from. A little more information than this one. <laughs> okay. Jeff, right. yeah, you got all this? Yeah. All right. Okay. All right. Thank you for your time. I appreciate Thank it. You. Thank you. Okay. That's yours. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Matt is not going to be here, but he did send me an email and some photos. Okay. So I. So, our next item on the agenda is to discuss the progress of Center Street Woods. And so, since we have some interested parties in the crowd, I'd like to hear from them first. Well, the system works. Um, we have been waiting for, um, this journal is out today, and they were waiting for the grates to come in. But the grate that he has is almost a green grate that you put on top of a pipe, not up against. So his plan was to drill holes okay. in this. Wait a minute. So it's more like a cover than a drain? <laughs> it's a cover. Cover. Yeah, that's what it is. It's like a floor drain. <laughs> Almost. <laughs> this? That's, that's what he sent me today. That's a cover. <coughs> so, um, Jesus God. And so it's not there because <coughs> Craig went to Home Depot, Craig Souza, and he actually found like almost this one? Yes. yes. And he put that on weeks ago. And it works. And he zip tied it on, and I said to Matt, the water's going through that. It's not going to go through that. You think? His grass looks nice. I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> so, so what is this one, uh, the little one? That's actually a great, and that space. has holes in it. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. That so that one is in, it's in there, it's and he put that yeah. in today. Okay, and that? That one, I haven't, I mean, we haven't had any rain to see if it works, but right, it rain, what yeah. Craig put in works. Okay. The thing that we need to know is what is the spacing in between this? I don't know. If it's anything more than four inches? Well, no that's way. not going to work. Mm -hmm. that. Yeah, no, I understand. But this one is not going to work either if it's more than four inches. I don't know. You have to ask. Not yeah. <laughs> may keep a kid out. This one kept the, kid out. And that was, oh, and that yeah. was our I'm concern. And that's why we put it up because we've been waiting and waiting and waiting. And you know we've got some. I just can't believe. I mean, since the last time we talked, that has still been like. Gary, what's the email say? <coughs> okay, so I asked him. I not too long ago, I sent him an email asking, you know, what's his status? What is the timeline going forward? Is the board's understanding that the mound of dirt for the fill for the next two lots to be developed, the rocks by the cul-de-sac should be removed, and as for the covers, what are you doing? So he responded saying, um, covers installed on Monday, building permit applications are being submitted for those lots in the next two weeks. So then I responded back to him saying, and what about the rock pile? And he said, once we have the building permit for the other lots, the, rock, the mm -hmm. other lots, the rocks can be removed. <coughs> I then told him just an FYI, the board will be discussing the progress at the next scheduled meeting. Here, you can attend, okay. His response was, okay, I'll send you pictures of the installed grades before then. Then I reminded him that we were meeting today said okay and then he sent those two pictures and his response was attached are two photos of the head wall one shows poly lock covers on each pipe the 12 inch is graded and properly and probably doesn't need any discussion the 30 inch is solid that's all they make but i could drill holes in it to all water penetration however someone else had installed a metal grate that in my opinion does the job and looks much better so I do not have the green cover installed on the 30-inch pipe. I left the existing grade in place and it provided a photograph of that. If the board prefers a polylock cover with holes, I can swap it out later this week. That don't look very, like, professional. It, it, no, that was what we put in. You like that, though? 
Better I like it better than a is. solid thing with holes drilled in it. How, See, how many spaces is there? I'm just trying to figure out what the spacing is on, I have that, no on idea. the other one. It's it's not it's more than four inches. It's more than four um, inches. I stopped by just before the meeting just to take a look. Um, so, I mean that that concept is good. Yeah, oh yeah. That's, that's what you're looking for. You just want some vertical What's slats. You know, keep people from or keep people or things from going in the pipe. You know. Um, but the solid cover is not going to work. Uh, it just defeats the entire purpose of the pipe. Um, the one with the floor drain cover on it is probably going to restrict flow going in there also. They yeah. just rip a section of that fence down and plunk it in front of it. That's my fence. <laughs> <laughs> you have a protection pond. Did that have anything here? Is there any um, fence protection pond that has a protection pond, though? Okay. <coughs> So two months, three months ago we came. So um, Craig could not be here, but he said if um, if you can if you can have pushed the as builds being signed off and accepted by the town um, before he's he's got people coming to put the trees down next week, and he said he was permitted to do that. Put in trees. Take no, taking trees. them all down in the locks. Clear the locks. Oh yes, I, I don't believe that there's any way that that can be stopped. It's okay. A, um, but Mr. Aguiar, the building commissioner, is not going to give any building permits out until we say so. Until we say so. And, and so I did. I don't know who I sent emails to of our side lot. Um, that's you know like the drains are sticking up out. I mean you saw, and then our side lot was we had an agreement that it would be put back the same way it was and so in he came out today to put those do that work today and i brought him over and i was like oh i'll do it next week so i mean that needs to our yard needs to be put back together so the, our concern is that building permits can be given out they will not. No, no, they, they will not. Uh, Matt, could you uh, write us a letter regarding <coughs> what you found today? Sure. Was this already in when you were there? Um, the smaller no, grate the, was in. The, the, the small small grate was in. So, so if you could address I, I, I just can't the issues that, that you saw as well as the issues that we're discussing. And so, then um, as geez, far as the, the pond, dope. that's not, that has no grates over it either. No, there's no grades. Yeah, okay, well, you the outlet the into the farm here for Brooks. Yes. Yeah, the large one. Yeah. 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 I mean, typically what they'll do is they'll <laughs> drill we'll a hole about and today, put a you bar have, down. Yes, he you stopped know, by through, through the top of the pipe. It's, it's yeah. grounded yeah. in. You know, it just keeps it could be know, animals yeah. or people from crawling up in there. Right. 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 It's not going to really stop. Yeah. Everything. And that pond is working acceptable. It's fine. Just right here. More or less, um, Just for so it looks like they put in the, the reducer on the pipe outlet, which is a good thing. Um, so you don't have excessive yeah, flooding downstream. Right? Um, but uh, it's getting out of control. Well, this is vegetation. Shouldn't there be a lip sunset? Because if you call it, so it's going to go right down the pipe. Oh, yeah. 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 There's no type of lip, so it's the pipe into the ground, profit. and the dirt is starting to go Well, no, it was probably so it Flushing back yeah. and forth, and it's going to fill yeah, the pipe. No? Yeah, I mean, the, the sediment should be removed out of it. Right, I mean, so it's not. It's going to so, I mean, it's going to be a, going to be a problem. I mean, it sediment. looks good now, and it's working now, but give it a couple of years and a couple of storms, we're going to have big mounds of dirt in and the pipes. Zero flow. Potentially, yes. Mm -hmm. I mean, knowing our love, Normally, yeah. these things stabilize. Once you get all the vegetation, you don't have that sediment moving through the pipes. Um, but so there's no so stone, there's no lip, there's no nothing. And is there a requirement to that? Is yeah, there there's supposed to be a rip wrap splash okay, pad. So that's that been needs, noted to, be, that needs to be done. Floor. Mm -hmm. It still hasn't been done. Uh, there's flare still won't get a building permit. Yeah, there's still reiterate the, any deficiencies. Sure. I have a feeling that conservation may not. Have given them the permission to cut, cut down the, the trees. trees. Do they? Is that? I think they need to. Is do that, that? Is there an order of conditions on those lots? Or yeah. Is